One of the main tasks of the United Nations Human Rights Council is bringing human rights home, as the saying goes. One would imagine that in an age of increased connectivity and rapid transportation, that this task is easier than decades ago. Yet, obstacles remain in transporting the very concept of human rights into people's homes. Since the body's inception in 2006, virtual participation via webcasts and video messages screened at the meetings of the Human Rights Council at the Palais des Nations have been the norm, allowing individuals to participate in council meetings from afar. Now, thanks to the new trust fund set up by the Council, delegates from small island developing states and least developing countries can now participate in Council meetings in person. And I think it's very important for small island states and least developed countries to participate here to better articulate the agenda items here at the Council back home. Since it became operational in January 2014, the Voluntary Technical Assistance Trust Fund enabled the participation in Human Rights Council meetings of government representatives from small island developing states and least developed countries by facilitating their travel to and accommodation in Geneva. These officials represented, amongst others, Ethiopia, Madagascar, the Maldives, the Seychelles, Sierra Leone, Suriname, Vanuatu, Kiribati, Tuvalu and Niger. Among this year's beneficiaries were the President of Kiribati and the Prime Minister of Tuvalu, who addressed the Council at its discussion on human rights and climate change, which focused on ways to address the adverse effects of climate change on the enjoyment of human rights. Uh, it's a long story. Nobody listened initially, but I'm beginning to believe that perhaps people are now beginning to, to listen to the story. How much have we done to address climate change as a human rights issue? The point that I'm trying to make here is it's about time we get into action. For low-lying countries like Kiribati, Tuvalu, the Marshall Islands, the Maldives, Tokelau, climate change is about their survival into the future. It's about the entire global community. The Human Rights Council is the moral voice of humanity, but we should all be the moral voice of humanity. Let's not leave it for anybody else. Let's say it, let's do it. The Human Rights Council needs to make a human response to the impacts of climate change. It's an unfortunate coincidence that Hurricane Pam hit both Tuvalu and Kiribati only days after this climate change discussion. Uh, climate change is, is a subject that uh, has been very difficult to, to pin down for us. The answer has not been coming forward. Up to now, there's been very little focus on the rights of those communities which are most severely affected. And so, this, uh, my participation here gives me that opportunity to, to speak about rights, our rights. Who can be held accountable for it? Because there will be dislocation of our people. The issue of climate change uh, impacts on human rights is extremely important and certainly for my country, Tuvalu, and uh, I believe all other small island countries. The discussion here in Geneva is timely. The main uh, uh, issue is to, uh, to share our concerns and also to seek understanding for our uh, aspirations, what the world should and must do. In addition to the issue of climate change, participants at the Human Rights Council also heard from over 20 independent experts on thematic and country issues, including Eritrea, Syria, Iraq and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Delegates also heard from over 90 senior government officials during the Council high-level segment and also an update from United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Mr. Zaid Rahad al Hussein. Most violations of human rights result from policy choices which limit freedom and participation and create obstacles to the fair sharing of resources and opportunities.